M.G. Leonard on writing. This episode, Thinking and Evaluating. How you do your thinking and evaluating is different for everyone, and I can only talk about the way I see things. But to my mind, there are different kinds of thinking, and I loosely define them as 1. Imaginative thinking. This is basically making stuff up. What happens next? World building. This is the thinking that you do mostly when you're writing your first draft. Then there's two, structural thinking, considering the narrative shape of your story, the pace, the action, the climax. Three, focused thinking, for the detail, character development, honing in on a scene to describe it clearly or evoke a mood. Four, linguistic thinking, considering the language you are using to tell your story your choice of words at important times. Now there are many different types of thinking and even to break it up like that may seem silly but I find it useful. So let's begin with the first draft and imaginative thinking. John Lennon famously said, life is something that happens when you are busy making other plans. I think it's kind of the same with writing. Stories grow in your head when you're busy getting on with life. I can't think about what I'm writing with any objectivity whilst I'm actually writing it. Because I write first thing in the morning, have a job and two kids, I find I do my imaginative thinking in all the in-between times. On the bus, in the bath, or even in the queue for the post office. Given a moment's peace, my mind chews over what I've written that morning and what I will write tomorrow. But I can never sit at my writing desk and think, because I just don't have the time. Every second has to be spent actively writing. And that seems to work well for me. When time is tight, your brain prioritises the immediate problems that need solving. And that is good, because too much thinking can be dangerous. It can scupper your momentum and stop you from making it to the end of your first draft. And you must make it to the end of that first draft. As Hamlet says, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. My first tip then is, when working on your first draft, do your imaginative thinking away from your computer or manuscript if you're writing with a pen. However, all your thoughts are valuable and should be scribbled down. And my second tip is so obvious, I'm loath to mention it, but if you are a writer, you must carry a notebook and pen with you at all times. So, when do you do your thinking? Well, There's no special right time. It might be while you're cooking or gardening. I find tube or train journeys trigger ideas because I'm forced to sit still and do nothing. It was on a train that JK Rowling conceived of the Harry Potter series. I think about my writing project when I'm walking from one place to another. Often it will be on the way to pick up the kids from school, which is a useless time to have an idea. But if you have a notebook and a pen or a voice recorder on your phone, your thoughts won't be chased away by the children. Once you get to the end of your first draft, congratulate yourself on writing a book. Print it out and put it away for at least a month, preferably longer. Go see friends. Do all the things that you sacrificed to get your book written and enjoy them. And then, when you feel like you are ready and can return to your manuscript with fresh eyes, Pull out your printed draft and prepare to be horrified. All first drafts are dreadful. Anyone who tells you that theirs isn't is lying. The bare bones of a scene will be there and one or two great lines of dialogue, maybe some shape or flair or a pleasing detail of a coat hem. But it's far away from being something that you'll let somebody else read. You need to do some careful evaluating and a whole lot of thinking before you set about writing your second draft. So, when you take your manuscript out of the drawer, make sure you have your notebook with you. And as you read through each chapter, make a note of your thoughts, the good and the bad. Do this from the beginning all the way through to the end. There is no point editing or polishing prose that you may cut later on. So now is the time for some serious structural thinking. 
Take a pad of post-it notes and write a short one or two sentence summary of each of your scenes or chapters. Find a blank wall and stick them up in order. Interrogate your story. Consider each scene. Is it moving the story forwards? If you cut it, would the story still make sense? Do you need to insert a new scene? Think about the three act and five act structures that most successful stories follow. Does your story structure follow these patterns? What is the timeline of your story events? Consider your hero's journey through the story. Where are your climaxes or twists? Note the pace of the story, when it picks up, when it dies down. Consider your characters. Are they all essential? Can any be combined to make a stronger character? Be prepared to pull your story apart and put it back together again. By the end of the process, you should have a different row of post-its. Scenes and characters will have gone. The events of the plot may happen in a different order. New scenes will need to be written. This and your notebook of thoughts combine to provide a map for your second draft. So now you need to sit down and write your second draft. Some people go to work on top of their first draft. Some write an entirely new second draft. Others type up a handwritten draft, making changes as they go. Whatever works for you is good. When I get to the end of my second draft, I go back to the beginning and read through, applying focused thinking and linguistic thinking to weak areas. Once you have done this, you should have a manuscript that you are ready to show other people. Now it's time to give it to your beta readers, the ones you trust the most to give you an honest response. You have been listening to M.G. Leonard, author of Beetle Boy, available in all good bookshops from March 2016. Follow me on Twitter or go to my website, mgleonard.com The wonderful music was by Sam Sparling Thank you for listening and keep writing